Hello everyone! Welcome to the lectures on the Tabanako. Today, let's continue to talk about the candlestick. Let's open Exodus chapter 25, verse 31 and 32. And thou shalt make a candlestick of pure gold, of beaten work shall the candlestick be made. His shaft and his branches, his bows, his knobs, and his flowers shall be of the same. And six branches shall come out of the sides of it, three branches of the candlestick out of the one side, and three branches of the candlestick out of the other side. We read two verses. When we look at the candlestick, there's a base and there is a one shaft. And on the right side of the uh, shaft, there are three branches. And on another side, there are another three branches. So it starts from one shaft, but it becomes seven branches. This candlestick was made by Oholiab and Busalel. But this candlestick wasn't designed by these people. Have you seen an Apple product box? It's written like this. Designed, in, designed by Apple in California, assembled in China. When Moses was in the Mount Sinai, God showed him the vision of the tabernacle which was in the heaven. So, Moses saw how the altar was looked like and how the mercy seat was looking like and also how the candlestick was looking like. So Moses, he memorized all the designs and when he came down to Israel people, which was in the wilderness, he uh, made a tabernacle with the Israelites. So this candlestick was designed by God. So we can tell the what kind of design God like. But this design of the candlestick, there is a like hidden meaning inside of it. This candlestick, when you look at it, there is one shaft in the bottom, but it becomes seven branches. So basically this shape cannot stand itself. But the reason why this candlestick can stand because there is a base is holding these branches. Right. In, even in our Christian's life, we also have the base. What is it? It's Jesus Christ. Just like how this candlestick cannot stand itself without base, we cannot stand ourselves without Jesus Christ. If Jesus cannot, uh, if Jesus doesn't hold us, we cannot stand by ourselves. If Jesus doesn't like, keep us, we can only fall into sin. That is who we are. And if we look at Luke chapter 15, it's talking about the prodigal son. This prodigal son, when he left father's house, he cannot uh, lead his own life but he fall into sin. So his sin wasn't committing adultery or like steal something or wasting money with a prostitute. Like those are sins, but his main sin was departing from father. So when he departed from father, because father is the one who can hold his life, who can lead him, to the best way, when he was disconnected from father, he cannot help but fall into sin. What about the Good Samaritan story? Many people misunderstand about the Good Samaritan story. Let me ask you, how, what is the main message of the Good Samaritan story? You may think, this Good Samaritan story is talking about helping many poor people and your neighbors, right? If you think like this, you very much misunderstand about the Good Samaritan story. What is this Good Samaritan story is truly talking about? There was one lawyer came to Jesus 
And this lawyer tried to tempt Jesus, ask a question. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Listen, the people who think I can do well, they focus on the how they are doing. But people who think like I cannot do it, I have no way, then they will look for Savior. They will look for help. This guy, a lawyer, stand in front of Messiah who came to save him. In front of mighty Son of God, this guy is asking a question. What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Who can go to heaven with your good works? Nobody. But this guy is rather than like focusing on Jesus, but he is focusing on himself because he thinks he can do it. He was the lawyer who teach the law. There are total 613 laws. He, all, he knows all the laws. Also, he tried to keep all the laws. But there is no one in mankind who kept all the law. But this guy, he tried to keep the law. Jesus asked him, What is written in the law and how do you read it? He answered, With all my strength, with all my might, with all my heart, I have to love my God and my neighbor as myself. Everyone, it's good to hear. But who can love your God like this? With all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. Who can love God like this? Nobody. Who can love your neighbor as yourself? Do you love the people in the outside just like how you love your children? Do you feed the people in the outside the how you feed just like how you feed your children? For me, honestly, I try to love my neighbor, but I don't love them as myself. I try and I do it, it's different. You, know, you try to love God with all your strength, and you love God with all your strength. These two totally different stories. You try to love God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind, like all the time. But can you do it? No way. Then what this law is talking about? If you read Romans chapter 3 verse 20 written, for the law is the knowledge of sin. Basically, the reason why God gave us the law is for us to realize that we have sinned. Before, before the law came down, we didn't know how sinful we were. But when the law came down and we try to keep it and we break it and we realize that we have sinned. And then the law is the schoolmaster to bring us to the Christ. This is true purpose of the law. Make you to realize that you have sinned, so you need Savior who can save you from your sin. You need Savior who can wash your sin. That is the purpose of the law. But this lawyer, he didn't know what was the true meaning of the law. So Jesus wanted to teach him. So Jesus asked him, So do it. And this lawyer answered, then who is my neighbor so that I can love? And this good Samaritan story is beginning like from here. This good Samaritan story is about is an answer about who the neighbor is for this lawyer. There was uh, one person who was going to Jericho. He had his own plan until he met thieves. When he met thief, he failed everything, 
and he lost everything, and now he's half dead. If nobody helped him, he would die. And there were several religious people passed by. Priest came and just passed by him. Levi came and just passed by him. And now Samaritan came to him and had a compassion on him and pour wine on his car and cure him and pour oil on his body and take him uh, to the inn uh, and then he uh, paid everything the, uh, where he needed to the uh, owner of the inn and with the promise that he will be back this good Samaritan left and Jesus asked so who can be the neighbor of this person who fell among thieves? This lawyer answered, the one who showed his mercy. Right. Jesus wanted to teach him. Who is your neighbor? In this story, who is this lawyer? Yes, it's a person who fell among thieves. Then who is Good Samaritan? Yes, it is Jesus Christ. Jesus, he didn't shed, he didn't pour like, like wine on our body, but he shed his precious blood to wash all our sins. He didn't pour oil on our body, but he gave us the Holy Spirit. He didn't uh, put us into the inn, but he brought us to the church. And with the promise that he will be back, he left. Who is this good Samaritan? It is Jesus Christ. This good Samaritan, he came to the person who fell among thieves. It wasn't this person who fell among thieves came to the good Samaritan, but Samaritan came to him. And Samaritan had compassion on him. And Samaritan poured wine. And Samaritan poured oil. And Samaritan put him on his beast. And Samaritan take him to the inn. And Samaritan they pay all the expenses uh, for the he need to the uh, owner of the inn. And Samaritan he promised that he will be back. And he left. So this Samaritan, he did every works. So when this Samaritan worked everything for the person who fell among thieves, what did this person who fell among thieves do? Basically, nothing. This person who fell among thieves did nothing. Who did everything? It was Good Samaritan. So what is the message of this parable? Jesus said, do likewise. It means, do like this story. You just be in the position where you cannot do anything without me. And I will come to you. And I will wash your sin. And I will give you Holy Spirit. I will lead you to the church. I will provide everything for you through the church. Jesus wanted to tell him, I am your neighbor, which is good Samaritan. You cannot do anything. You already broke the law. You already failed. Just there. Just stay there where you cannot do anything. I will come to you and I will have mercy on you and I will do everything for you. This is the story of Good Samaritan. Everyone, if God doesn't hold you, how can you protect yourself from your sin? If God doesn't lead you, how can you lead your life uh, briefly? The reason why uh, you are here and listening to sermon today it's because God led you to listen to the word. You, we are not the people who love God with all our heart, with all our strength, 
with all our mind. No, that is not our heart, but that is the heart of God for us. God loves us with all His strength, with all His mind, with all His heart. And God is holding us even today. There is the base of this candlestick. This shape of candlestick cannot stand itself. But this base is holding this uh, shape, holding this candlestick tight. So this candlestick can stand strong. It's not because this candlestick can strong itself, but this base is holding this candlestick. Bible never said, you have to become the light of the world. No. Bible said, you are the light of the world. It means, He already made you the light of the world. You didn't try to become the light of the world. It wasn't your effort. It wasn't your work. It was Jesus' work. He made you the light of the world with His precious blood, with His redemption. He washed all our sins and He redeemed us forever, once for all. And He made us white as snow and now He gave us Holy Spirit and made us light of the world. But, however, even now, if God doesn't hold you, if Jesus doesn't lead you, we cannot stand by ourselves. We have to remember, we are just like this candlestick. We cannot stand without base, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you everyone, and God bless you all.